Are you searching around for a shared hosting plan and you're probably looking at Namecheap as one of your options? Well, in this case, I'm going to be talking about what I like and dislike about Namecheap's shared hosting. Now, in my case, I actually use Namecheap for some of my domains, so I know what I'm talking about. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about what I like and dislike about Namecheap's shared hosting and what type of limitations you are going to hit on Namecheap. So let's get over to my desktop and show you what the plans are and what is the good about it and the bad about it. So let's go jump over to my desktop right now. What's up everyone, my name is George and this is SaaS Master. If you are not subscribed, do consider subscribing. Now, if you guys wanna head over there and check out these deals, I will be leaving a link in the description. Now, these are the shared hosting plans that they have as of this video. So there's three plans, which is the Stellar, Stellar Plus, and the Stellar Business. You can buy these through monthly, yearly, and two years. Now, something funny that you're going to see here is that when you select a year, it's actually cheaper than selecting two years. And you're gonna be saying, why am I paying more if it's two years? Shouldn't I be getting a better price because it's a longer time? Well, this is the good thing and the bad about it. If you pay for two years, you're gonna pay this amount for the two years, so monthly, two years. If you select one year, yes, you're gonna pay $2.18 a month, but for the next year, you are gonna pay the full price, $5.88. Now, these prices that you are looking at, since I've selected one year, is what you are going to pay by month. So next year, it's gonna renew at this new price. Now, you're going to see the first limitations that you're going to see here, which is the Stellar version, $1.38. You get a domain name, so you get a free .com or one of these domains, fun, host, online, site, etc. You get one free year of this, not two years, not three, just one. And you get access to three websites, so you can add three websites on Stellar, okay? And you get five gigabytes of SSD drive. Now, 20 gigabytes might not sound like a lot, but for three sites, and if these are static sites, what does that mean? that you are building a landing page, you're building a website for a company, and it's not a store, so there's not, there's not a lot of things going on. So 20 gigabytes is more than enough for three sites. And you get free CDN with this. CDN is Content Delivery Network, which means that um, it saves bandwidth and it saves the CPU load on your hosting plan because it's delivering the data through the different points in the global network, okay? The second one is Stellar Plus. You get, again, the domain name, unlimited websites. Now, check this out. This is something that's probably gonna capture all of us because you're gonna say, unlimited websites? Well, that's awesome. So practically everyone is gonna go for this one. And it's a good plan, but there is a limitation on websites. You can add as many websites as you want. I mean, cool, that's unlimited. But there is a lock to this. There is a limitation, and this is one of the things I dislike there's a file count limit. What does that mean? When I install WordPress or a PHP site or etc., that's gonna load files into it. Let's just say 5,000 files, 10,000. Or if it's a really huge site, it could be 100,000 files, 150,000. So let's just say that you have three sites that are 100,000 files each, which is pretty rare, but it does happen. Well, these sites are gonna hit that limitation. So you're gonna be able to only add three sites. Or if they are only, I don't know, 10,000 um, files, well, you can add 30 sites because they have a three, 300,000 limitation file count on this, which is the IO nodes, okay? And I'm going to show you that on my dashboard in a bit. And I'll show you that right now. This is my cPanel from one of my shared hosting plans that I've bought. And there's a file, file usage count. So like I mentioned before, this is a Stellar Plus and there's a limitation to 300,000 files. On this plan, I have uh, 12 domains roughly. So 12 websites on this, WordPress sites, which are just normal sites, nothing fancy. It's not like a, I don't know, a store or anything like that. It's just landing page sites, business sites, normal sites. And that's the file count that I have. So in this case, I've managed to load 12 sites and I'm kind of on that limit, so 75%. Just something that you have to consider when getting these plans. Again, you get also free CDN, and you get auto backup, which is really nice to have on this. Now, there's not a lot of difference to jump from Stellar to Stellar Plus, so I do recommend the Stellar Plus as the good option for shared hosting. Now, things that you are gonna get in shared hosting that you won't get on a VPS, because I do have VPS also. I have VPS on Vulture, SSD nodes, and Trust me, I have a lot of sites. 
But on shared hosting, one of the benefits that you have is that you get also emails with this. So for example, if I add a domain, like, I don't know, sasmaster.net, if it was on my shared hosting, I can also add emails in there, which is pretty cool. It's already here. I'm paying for the shared hosting only, and I also get access to emails so I can use them and I can create my, e my email boxes and all of that, so it's pretty cool. On a different side, if I'm not using shared hosting and I'm using a BPS, well, I have my website on a BPS, but I have to pay for email service on another system. So I'm paying for two things on BPS. So that's a good thing about shared hosting that we have that in one system. Okay, there's unmeter, unmeter bandwidth. Oh, let me jump into the Stellar Business Plan. Now, Stellar, Stellar Business Plan is a little bit better. It's a, there's some limitations and there's better limits with this. The file count for the Stellar Business is 600,000, not 300,000 like the Stellar Plus. So I have these two. I'm actually using these two for some of the sites that I have, but for my personal sites where I need the top speed and all of that, I actually use a BPS. I will leave a link in the description of the BPS that I recommend in case you jump into that phase, okay? So Stellar Business gives you better limits with the file count, but there's a 50 gigabyte SSD limitation. So it's not a metered SSD as it is on Stellar Plus, but there's your unlimited websites again, but you have that limitation for the file count. Now they use a faster system with this. You get better limits with the CPU and the RAM usage on the Stellar Business, but they limit you on the 50 gigabytes SSD. So if you're running sites that are big in file count, and no, on file size, then Stellar is a good choice for you. If it's a business site, you need more speed, you need more limitations, Stellar Business would be the way to go on shared hosting. And again, you get free CDN and auto backups and cloud storage. So if something goes wrong on the Stellar Business, it's also enabled on they have a backup on the cloud storage. So it's never down. That's a really cool thing. So it's 100% uptime because if something fails on the hosting system, it's gonna switch it over to another system that they have, the cloud storage, and it's gonna be fine. It's your site's not gonna be down. So the highest performance, true stability, data protection, etc. So it jumps with different limitations. Okay, these are the limitations if you wanna check them with Calm, like what you get with this, and there's the file count that I was talking about, the inode limit, 300,000, 300,000, and 600,000. So that is the give or take. You get unlimited sites, but you have the file count that limits you. So it's like, that's where they limit things. And other shared hosting plans that you find on other companies, they'll find a way to limit you. They'll say, you know what? I'll give you, I don't know, 50 sites, but I'll limit you somewhere else in the file count, or I'll limit you on the sites that you can load. You can only load three, but you have unlimited file count or you get good RAM and good CPU, but I'll limit you over here. So they'll kind of work that out because shared hosting gives you a good price. Another downside about shared hosting is that you are sharing the hosting with someone else. So what does that mean? People are using the same IP address as you are. So if someone is spamming emails with the same IP that you are using, well, that's gonna affect your IP reputation. So that's another a downside about that. Plus, if someone abuses the system, it's gonna kind of lower your resources for the loading time on your site. So if someone abuses in that shared hosting system, there's gonna be some downgrade of the speed. And you're gonna notice the different speeds on your website from time to time, because that's gonna depend on how other users are going to use the shared hosting. I know, um, you might not know, but shared hosting does limit how you use the shared hosting, so they avoid overload but if a lot of people are actually using the same shared hosting that you are on, well, it's gonna limit your speed on that. Okay, so things that you have to consider. So let me show you really quickly what you're gonna get with shared hosting. You are gonna get cPanel Access, which is a really great system, and you get your IP address, like I mentioned before, and this IP address is shared with whoever is in this shared hosting. I have no idea how many people share the same IP, but it is shared. So, I mean, it could be 10 people, it could be 100, it could be 200 people, et cetera, using that IP. You can pay for an ex for another IP address to be your own, a unique IP. And I think it's about a dollar or $2 a month to have your own IP address, which is a good idea if you want good reputation and you want better stability and those good kind of things, okay? With BPS hosting, you do get a, your own IP all the time. It's not shared. Okay, so like I mentioned before, there's a file usage, and in this case, it's almost hitting the 300,000 count on this, 
Physical memory, there's two gigabytes for this. The entry process, the CPU us usage, the number of processes, disk usage, etc. On cPanel, it's a really easy to use interface. You can install WordPress super easily. Just head on over to, here it is, WordPress Managed by Softaculous, and you install it on your domain. If you've purchased the domain on Namecheap or connected it to it, it's super easy. It's gonna be on your cPanel. Just add WordPress to it, and you're gonna view all your WordPress sites from here. Other things that you can do is create your email accounts from here. So it's super easy because it's included. That's one of the beauties I like about shared hosting. So why do I use shared hosting if I also use VPS? VPS, yes, it's way better, more complex. That's so much easy. I have to maintain it. I have to take care of it. On shared hosting, you get like kind of a little bit of support and kind of those things. But why do I still use shared hosting? Because I do sell some websites to clients that don't need a lot of resources. They don't need speed and they do want email and I don't know, but they don't want to pay a lot. So if they don't want to pay a lot, I put them here on shared hosting. So they get email accounts, they get a landing page website, and they have a website that they can show off to their clients. Something simple. You know what? You want that? I'll give you this. And that's why I'm using shared hosting. If I wanted to build a store or something more complex, I go use VPS. So just kind of things that you should give or take. You can get away with some complex sites on shared hosting, but you will get hitting those limitations from a, a, in a certain time. But if you hit those limitations at a certain time, we'll jump into something better like a BPS, okay? Namecheap also does sell BPS, but I haven't tried it to give you my recommendation for it. So you can also have the auto backup, you have code guard. There is a lot of things that you can do here. There's a file manager, which is super easy to use. And all of that comes in with cPanel with the shared hosting the disk usage of what you're using. So for example, in this case, I can view the IO notes, which is the file count. Remember where we talk, we were talking about the file usage. It's in the IO notes usage. So I can view it here to see if there's a site that just has too much files and I would investigate what's happening. Now, something that you should consider is that when you install WordPress, I think it's about 3000 um, files, which is, I don't know, it's not a lot. You can add a lot of, you can add a lot of sites with this, but if that WordPress site has installed a cache plugin, those cache plugins load a bunch of files, small, tiny files that, I mean, it's like one kilobyte, 15 kilobits, like it's super small, but they're, then the, the bad part about this is that they are counting the file usage, not the file size. So cache plugins load a bunch of files. So be aware that if you are in shared hosting and you have a site that just blows up with a bunch of files, it's because you, because you are using a cache um, plugin. So you have to clean the cache or remove cache when using shared hosting. So things that you would have to consider. You can add the domains here if you have other domains. So like I mentioned before, if, and in this case, it's a Stellar Plus, so I have unlimited access to domains. So I can add more domains from here, from Namecheap, from somewhere else, from Cloudflare, Etc. just add them through here. SSH access, IP blocker, some mod security, leech protection, etc. You get all of that. I won't go in, into that with that, in depth, but you get the idea that what you are getting is a great price because it's super cheap compared to BPS and you get the specs like the email system. You get that nice panel with C panel, which would cost you additional if you were using BPS. So you get a good price. You get email accounts included, easy to use panel with cPanel, and that's a good part about it. If you need price and you need something easy to use, this is the way to go, and support is good. It opens up a chat and someone's always available. I mean, the most time it's taken for someone to jump in is 10 minutes. Most of the times it's three minutes, two minutes, okay? So those are the good things that you can get with Namecheap on shared hosting. The limitations that I've mentioned before is the file count, which is really important. Um, the file count and speed. If you're looking for top speeds, again, BPS would be the way to go and CDN on a BPS. In this case, you get free CDN, which is cool, but you can also use additional CDNs if you like not to use the Namecheap's CDN. And you can also deploy this on the US, UK, and Europe. Prices change a bit, but you have those options available. So why would you use UK if your clients or most of your viewers are from near UK, so for example, Europe, well, I would choose UK. And there's EU for this also. But if most of your clients on the US, use that. But again, you have CDN for those issues if you want to load things faster. 
But there you go. Those are the shared hosting plans on Namecheap. Like I mentioned before, I am using Stellar Plus and I'm using Stellar Business for certain use cases. So yes, I would, I would recommend it if you are looking for a good price. If you're looking for speed and no file count limits, jump into BPS. And I would recommend, for example, Vulture or DigitalOcean. And I'll leave the li links in the description. But there you go. That is the video for shared hosting plans on Namecheap. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you on my next videos.